say? Well, I'm so, I'm just, I'm so excited. I was just saying before Aww, we started thank recording, you. I basically just started this podcast so I could have Paulina and Bricia back on so Stop. I could talk to them about the things I wanted to talk to them about. Um, Super Congrats Mamas, welcome podcast. to Extra Shot. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I'm so excited to be on the other side. I know. It's a, is it nice? Is it nice to be interviewed as opposed to having to interview people? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Girl, we just talk. I just so love, I just, like, we just could show up and talk. So I'm like, yeah, yeah sure. I love, talking. I love like talking to friends. So, you know, any chance I get to talk to my friends, I'm like, let's do it. Any so- format, any way. Let's just, you know, let's just chat. It's the best. And it's such a funny thing because you guys are so personal. You know, when you're listening to your chats, especially the bit at the beginning of your podcast, when it's the two of you talking to each other, you just, you really feel like you're kind of just like hanging out with your friends, listening to them talk about their lives, which I love, but also I feel like I know so much about what's going on in your lives right now. because It's okay. Everyone does. And it's totally (laughs) fine. It's on purpose. It's, it's so interesting when I meet super on the streets. Um, I always tell people I encourage to please come and say hi, please. I hate getting the DMs of like, I saw you, but I was too shy. Like, dude, please do not be shy. It's how you have no idea how much I love because I feel like y'all know me more than a lot of my really close girlfriends. Cause there's certain things I say on the podcast that I don't even tell my close friends. And I do have one of my close girlfriends, one of my best friends, um, who now has a baby. I didn't know she listens to the show. And I'm like, it's so weird where my girlfriends listen to the show. She's like, you never told me this. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I did it. <laughs> the weirdest thing is like when, well, like my best friend like sends me a text and she's like, is it true that this is happening? I'm like, how do you know? Like, you know, I forget. She's like, oh, well, so-and-so told me that they heard it on the podcast. I'm like, oh my God, I forget. I, I, we, I really forget that, you know, people like listen. there's a lot of people out there that listen. <laughs> And sometimes we do say more things here than we actually say to, you know, like everyday conversations. We just like uh, spit it up here on the mic. So it's It's, great. I mean, you know, people know us. And you're good at it. You're so good at it. And you have such a good rapport. So how did you guys decide? You know, I know that your family has had a family business. I know you guys have worked at the restaurant for a long time. What made you decide to start doing Super Mamas together? Paulina, go ahead. The struggles of motherhood, you know, um, I had a baby first. Uh, I was the first one in family to have a baby and it was really freaking. Can we curse in your podcast? I don't yes. Know. Yes. Oh, OK. It was so fucking hard. It was so <laughs> hard. Right. Um, I actually had a huge postpartum depression um, and I just felt like there was something wrong with me and I was so lonely, uh, but no one really understood me. Uh, it wasn't until Bricia had her baby that she realized how hard it was and um, girls don't know girls don't know how hard it is to have kids you know baby should come with a warning you know this is hard we, we as are well. the warning we Paulina are. and I are now the warning signs for babies <laughs> like, okay, everywhere like, I go but but he said okay you went second so you had seen Paulina's experiences did that did, did you think didn't you think you were just going to be the one mother that never had a I didn't really see her experience, experience. I didn't oh, see her didn't. Didn't. that okay. is the, but that's like the second part of the of why the podcast came to be you know I was pregnant I I got pregnant when I was 29 um so you know through my 20 Felina had her baby when I was 25 26 I, think, I was 29 as well when I was pregnant. so it was like three okay, years so I was, I, I was when I had my first baby so. okay yeah so um, you know, I was 26 years old and let me tell you, 26 year old Bricia had a lot of fun, <laughs> you know, twin Bricia in her twenties lived her life. Yes, okay. Girl. There was cocktails named after me all around the city of LA. Yes. Like, that is how I lived my life. I was going from restaurant opening to restaurant opening. I was hanging out with all my chefs, with all my bartenders. I was all spreading out the mezcal gospel. Like I was just living my life. There was no time for no niece. There was no time for Hey sister, I had a baby and I feel so I feel like sad. I'm like, mm, you wanted the baby, good luck. You know, I was like that person, a hundred percent. Like, I'm not even gonna like try to, you know, pretend that I was a good sister. I was not. I was just really consumed in my life, and I just thought my sister always wanted a baby, 
all the time. Like yeah. she would cry because she couldn't get pregnant. So yeah. when she had the baby, I'm like, well, you wanted the baby. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Deal with it. It's a horrible thing. And, and I realized now I'm, I'm a grown ass woman now. Okay. I've had babies. Like I understand <laughs> that 20 something year old race yet was wrong. Yeah. And that is what's wrong with society. I realized that in, in my experience meeting so many women now in her journey, women that struggle the most to have babies have the hardest time coming to terms with how hard it is to be a mom. Mm. I just got pregnant. Mm. I was just like, Oh, okay. So I wasn't trying and I wasn't like, so it was a different experience for me. Yeah. However, when I did have my baby, the second that baby came out, that's the second I started feeling guilty. Like I should have been a better sister. I should, <laughs> I started calling all my friends who had kids, all two of them. Cause I didn't, I was the only one with kids. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. I wasn't there for you. I'm such a horrible friend. I told my sister, I'm such a horrible sister. How could you do this? How did you do this with two kids? Like, oh my God. So as a whole world opened yeah. up to me and I just had this whole level of respect for moms, for single moms. I mean, the guilt was real. And me thinking about what my sister had to go through by herself alone mm. even if she she had two sisters a mom a dad and a brother and she still had to go through this journey of postpartum by herself because none of her family understood because yeah. we're latinos yeah. and we're like depression is fake you know so <laughs> like oh just <laughs> just go exercise do we find so yeah um, <laughs> they told me to so, go exercise <laughs> yeah yeah so like so going through this and understanding the feelings that go behind, like figuring all this out, we realized if my sister who had a community around her was feeling like that, like how are these women who have no families here doing it? Especially in a big city like LA, a lot of people come, they don't have families. Yeah. So we just wanted to create a space where we were just real and we weren't just, and we were not, I mean, it's changed so much. We've been in the podcast scene for a long time. So <laughs> Now there's a lot of, now it's normal to be real. Back then, nobody was talking about the reality of motherhood. Nobody was talking about the reality of relationships. Um, you know, so we just put the mic on. I think the first episode we were sort of like low-key drunk and we just put it out there and then just became- We really were. Fun. Yeah. You were, you were not so low-key drunk, actually. We're drunk. not, we're not drunk anymore. <laughs> we don't do that. That life changed. And now, you know, now I live in Pasadena. I'm in the suburbs. I have two children. Like- <laughs> Now I'm in my 30s, like recent my 30s is very different than recent my 20s. It is kind of amazing. Although, you know, the other day I've been working on a novel and I have a fictional character in the book who's a mom and a new mom and really struggling with what that's meant for her career. And that adjustment phase that I think happens when you have kids, the readjusting of your sense of self and who you are as a person. And I had somebody say to me, well, I'm not sure that it's very relatable to have a character who like is really almost kind of regretting that she had kids. And I was like, I think, I think what? that's really relatable. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you're not a mom. Correct you know? me if I'm wrong, but, <laughs> but it's so true. I talk about it with my friends all the time. And one thing that I am really loving, uh, as you guys have evolved and your kids have gotten older is seeing how you're kind of bringing in, like, for example, there was an amazing podcast that I not only listened to, but I sent to all of my friends with an adolescent psychologist, I think, because, mm -hmm. you know, my twins are about to turn 12. So similar in age to, to your oldest daughter, Paulina, and it, it's a really new time in parenting. I feel like everything I knew, I now have to throw away and learn a whole yeah. bunch of stuff. And so, you know, your content is evolving as your kids evolve and as your parenting journey evolves, which is kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. It is definitely evolving, you know, before it was all about like, you know, being a better mom and like we're set the babies and sleeping. And now I will, we always tell people like we are the biggest birth control walking around because uh, we <laughs> I do feel them, like one like, of us has to have another baby, Pauline, in order to create that new content. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, one of us has to, has to, and you know, probably the chances are more on that side than on mine. <laughs> Um, because I feel like, you know, as, as you were saying, you know, you lose your, your, your previous identity and then, you know, for a long time, I don't know about you, but I think like I'm, my youngest is six. She turned six this week. And I think like, I'm finally getting myself back. You know, I'm finally after almost 12 years, I'm finally able to to get to see me again through the weeds, you know, I'm finally like, ah, you're coming out of it. But this past 12 years have been very intense and it's, and it's ever evolving now, you know, with my teenage, my tween, um, 
and my six-year-old, my nine-year-old, it's totally different stages. And it, it, it just changes a lot. And I think like the beauty of the podcast is that people don't know how much healing more, much more healing it is for Bracey and I than, than you guys think, because Mm -hmm. honestly, as we evolve as parents, as we evolve in our relationships, as we have evolved in our entrepreneurship career, we seek um, advice and help and we make new relationships and we meet new people and we start bringing them on the show to talk about the things that sometimes selfishly I need help on you know I'm like how do I deal with a tween how do I deal with this you know we were talking about like periods and stuff and I was like I thought I had more time <laughs> to talk about that so you know we've done the whole the, from baby to now um it's an evolution of not only our children but ourselves like you were saying and it, it looks very different now, you know, it looks very different as to, mm-hmm. um, I think like, if you look at the catalog of, 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 of episodes, mm-hmm. you know, there's been, a, there was a lot of crying at the beginning for some reasons. Now there's a lot of crying for other reasons. Oh, there's other reasons. always been crying. There's always been crying. There's always been ups. There's always been downs. Um, and I think it's the reality of things. And, uh, I, I went to a mental health conference this week and I was telling them like, People, people say, um, you know, when you're pregnant, you should go to the uh, prenatal mm-hmm. class. I'm like, no, they should do postnatal. <laughs> yes. yes, they should do 100%. like that's what they need to talk about because nobody tells you how hard it is. Everybody makes it seem like it's gonna be a walk in the park, and then you think there's something wrong with you totally. because you you're not enjoying it like on TV, you know? Totally. Do you guys usually? agree about what guests you want to have on what you want to talk about like what's your kind of process like working together because you're also sisters so there's that dynamic Uh, as well it just you know I think it evolves and goes by seasons like for example right now I'm going we're going through a season where you know I'm going through a lot personally so I just offload so much stuff to our producer and to Paulina and I just show up Mm. and then there are seasons where I you know Paulina is more active in okay I really want to have this person or you know, I go somewhere, I meet an incredible woman and I say, you have to be in the show. So having a producer has just been, shout out to Beth. Um, She is so great and wonderful at following up, you know, all the emails and, you know, all the things that happen behind the scenes. The first, I would say five years, it was mostly me and Paulina. I think for the first two, three years, it was just really just, I would edit every single show and I would publish every single show and I just got burned out. And then Paulina did it and then she got burned out. And then we said, (laughs) we need to just hire someone to do this. Um, So for the first, so for the past, and I think after also we took a little hiatus in 2020, 2021, Mm. uh, because we just weren't feeling it yeah really was something happening in those years yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and now we're back and it's pretty fun and I think it just happens I think it just goes by season and honestly it's a it's it's a hobby for us this is not like our podcast isn't a lucrative business and everyone just gets really shocked when we say this mm. we we do not make money from the podcast at all we don't even we don't pursue partnerships we don't it's just a place for me and my sister to unload trauma unload onto everyone <laughs> trauma unloaded in public <laughs> to the benefit of so many and but you guys have so many other things happening in your lives you have a thriving restaurant you have food businesses tell me a little bit about the other stuff that's happening in your lives around the book the book but you see the book just came out like what else is going on around the podcast because you guys have a lot yeah, again, the podcast is a hobby and it's fun. And, you know, it's a place, again, for my sister and I to just connect the sisters and have fun and meet people. And if it's really, ha- it has introduced us to a lot of wonderful people. And if it doesn't bring any financial, uh, it, it's not financially lucrative, it's lucrative in, in human capital. We have met so many incredible people. And I think that's even, that's invaluable. You really can't put a number on the number of women we've met and connected and who we become best friends due to the show. Um, outside of that, there's, I mean, we run a family owned business and we do everything together. Yes. I've written two cookbooks, but aside from that, like my sister runs a restaurant. She like runs that shit and has a hundred employees under her. My brother and I, um, work together to grow our food products or michelada brand which is called i love micheladas uh, we also put a monthly a huge event uh every first friday of the month with over two thousand people and 
we also have our mole starters and our chocolate, our galaguetza chocolate, our galaguetza mole starters that you can order for the holidays as well and well through year round. But I feel right now it's tis the season for tamales and everything cooking. So I love molestore.com and I love michladas.com and yeah, all the other things. I <laughs> I mean you got you guys had, you know, your dad started um the restaurant and I was like reading a little bit about your story uh and I was watching the documentary before we started recording <laughs> and was there was there like ever a part of you that didn't want to go into food that was like rebellious like I don't want that to be a part of, of my life and career or did you always know that that was where you were gonna go no we were you to know go. we rebelled we all rebelled we didn't want to <laughs> be part of this you know when you grow up in the family business and that is all you know, and that is all you do. And, you know, you miss out on weekends with your friends at Magic Mountain and Disneyland and going to the mall. You're like, why do I have to go to the restaurant, you know? Um, and, you know, my dad was always very strict about work ever since we were little. You know, you're sick, you go to work. That's what you need. You know, you're sad, go to work. That's what you need. You're so, part of depression, probably go to work. Yeah. You're going to be That's literally fine. what they told her. That's, <laughs> That's actual, literally what That was actual advice. advice. That's actual advice. Like, oh, you're depressed is because you need work, you know? So yeah, you uh, I was like, you'll feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Work Which kind of, like, you know, I will say work does help me feel better when I'm depressed. So yeah, maybe, no, it does. But, but like, I think when you're a part kid, of the question is different. <laughs> yeah. And when you're a kid, you don't, you don't, you don't care about it. You, yeah. you, you don't need, need that. Yeah. So yeah, we did. We all did. I mean, um, I recently uh, was talking to someone about like, I, I actually left the company for a while. Um, and, and then I came back to work, but, um, no, it was not something that, you know, I was like, I'm going to be in food my whole life. I, I think I, but people don't really sometimes want to know, or like sometimes that we always try to explain to people is that, it's not that we are food people. It's just that we are Oaxacan. We some of Oaxaqueños, and this is what we eat. And this is just like we're just trying to show people what we are, what Oaxaca is about, you know. Um, and this is this is something that is we're passionate about. We're passionate about our culture in general, mm -hmm. Oaxaca in general, everything that has to do with our culture. And a big part of that and the main part of Oaxaca is food, mm -hmm. is music, is art, is um, all the things that you see that we do is about it's a reflection of who we are, how we grew up you know, where we come from, what we are really proud of, what makes us, us. And um, I think that it, what we do is a reflection of that. You know, um, my, my dad and his family, my dad comes from a, like a very entrepreneurial family. Um, I, you know, I remember since I was a little girl, my, my tias, my tios working super hard mm -hmm. all the time. My grandfather was a, um, Un comerciante in, mm -hmm. in Oaxaca, uh, you know, so like generations of entrepreneurships. So it was just what we were going to yeah. do. You know, yeah. it, it's just it's just what it is. It it wasn't like, what do you want to be when you grow up? You want to be a doctor? You want to be this? It was like, oh, we all work because, you know, we have we come from uh, a very small. It was a small like nobody really knew Oaxaca before. Mm -hmm. It's one of the, it's the one of, it was, I don't know anymore, but it was one of the poorest uh, states in within Mexico. We're all the way in the South. We are indigenous. We're like short, dark, you know? And so it was um, always, we were looked down upon, you know, growing up. So for us, it's been a mission to uplift our, our community, our culture, our food, mm -hmm. everything. And just say, we are not what you think you, we are. We are so much more. So um, that's been our passion, you know, and and it's been really fun and and exciting and we love to do it because we honestly love everything that we, yeah. you know, that we that we sell, like the food. We love the food. We love the micheladas. We love having fun. We love cooking. We love family. We love all of that. Do your kids feel connected to Oaxaca and Oaxacan culture in the same way that you kind of wish for them like or that you would want them to or are they like oh I mean, god they mom, better <laughs> no they do they, they do. do they do I think they feel the connection to the grandparents you know yeah. like mis abuelos they're in Oaxaca and you know they 
it's like I'm uh, the same thing. People ask me where you're from, and it's weird because I always say Oaxaca. I never say like, oh, I'm from Mexico. You know, I'm like I'm from Oaxaca. Yeah. Um, and ever since they're, I mean, they've been here in the restaurant and around everything that we do forever and ever and ever since my belly. Uh, pre- you know, we used to have a crib in the back in the back of the restaurant for the babies and we would work and our babies were next to us um so they've been here like my daughter i told her like what do you want to have for food in your birthday and she said chips and mole and i was like okay uh so we're gonna have (laughs) chips and mole for her birthday too because she wants chips and mole and so they're very attached to the food they're very attached to what it means to go to oaxaca Mm -hmm. and the freedom that it gives them when they go and that I don't know, they transform into yeah. kids. I don't know how to explain it, but you know, like we live in the US and everything here is very sheltered and closed and there's no freedom, I guess, yeah. like for the kids yeah. to go and play outside and do all of that. And when they go to Oaxaca, it's uh, it's all of that, you know? They are in the car, in the back, they go to uh, Al Cerro, they go play with the animals, they go eat, they go run, They they're free, they're free. And so... It, they do have a they have a, a di- different connection than we do but they definitely have a, a, a connection yeah so this is gonna air the week of halloween and the de los muertos so what kind of tips do you have for somebody who is like planning their menu what do they need to be serving what do we need to be doing i'm celebrating in scotland unfortunately where there's only like five people that celebrate Halloween it's here. okay then you then right. find the, find, find the four <laughs> find the four and go all out together create your I, community. Give, I give full-size candy bars because I never have to give out that many so I'm trying to build something here but yeah what do you think for the people who are listening what should they be thinking about as they're getting excited for this week you know I would say food should be at the center of it all I think that mole chocolate are at the center of de los muertos for us and from Oaxaca which is what we do and don't overthink about things your altar, whatever you call it, ofrenda, is pretty or special. If, if, a couple of photos, sempasuchil, fire, water, wind, earth, it's all you need. And teach your kids, share this, share this special, share this special moment with your children. Of course, Halloween is so much fun and we're very lucky that we could celebrate both. Um, but De Los Muertos is a very spiritual part of our culture. And I think it's something that's invaluable and should be passed down from generation to generation. So spend the time yeah. with your children. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, uh, We believe wholeheartedly in Oaxaca that we are visited by our, um, you know, by our family. So it's just about honoring them and remembering them and, you know, uh, it's everything is around food you know they come to eat with us they come to drink with us they come to celebrate with us and it, it is again you know it, food is a, such a like integral part of culture uh that definitely you know have your their your loved one's favorite food in the altar you should have their favorite food it's a way to honor them and to remember them mm-hmm. and um it just really it's a beautiful I think like the difference between Halloween and Dia de los Muertos is like Halloween is like boo, you know, and Dia de los Muertos is embracing. It's embracing. It's not scary. It's actually very uh, comforting knowing that like I'm going to feel my grandmother more than other days that day and that, you know, to me, she's mm-hmm. going to be here and she's going to come and I'm going to be able to have a meal with her again, you know? And so it's, a, it's a, it's such a beautiful part of our culture. I would, I had the opportunity to be in Oaxaca last, last year and I felt like a child again. I felt like a child, just that, like the, the, the feeling that you get over there when you go to Dia de los Muertos is something that I cannot describe. Every, every door in my mom's pueblo is open. Every single mm-hmm. door of every yeah, single beautiful. house is open. And when you peek into every single house, everyone is together. Everyone is celebrating. There's no pain. There's no suffering. There is a lot of joy. And this is the chance where people get to feel close to the ones that have passed. So it's very, at 12 o'clock, the, the bells ring in the town. And it's the beginning where everyone shows up 
and everything comes down and everyone mm-hmm. welcomes and everyone is visiting and everyone is being communal and everyone is just being together. It's so beautiful. It sounds it, incredible. I, it's, it's, a, it's incredible. So I mean, it's, it's sacred. About it's a sacred time. It's sacred. And so it's it, it, you should make it your own. It's your own. Whatever you want it to look like. It's about food and family and love and I love memories. It. I think we're going to do it this year. I don't know how many others in Scotland, but that's okay. We'll be, we'll have hey, here. We'll keep the door you know, open. You should start your <laughs> thing. About that. Why not? Oh, Bricia Palina, thank you so much for coming no, on Extra you. Shot. Your podcast is amazing. Super Mamas is everywhere you get your podcasts. And there are so many other things. We'll put the links to all the incredible businesses you have uh, in the show notes. And thank you guys. It was so nice to chat with you. Oh my gosh, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You if you want to get your mole, I love mole.com. If you want to get chocolate, if you want to get a lot, if you want to get a michelada for your loved ones, I love michelada.com as well. The best. <laughs>